Hi, today we're going to be looking at this diagnostic tool. This is the Launch Creda Elite. And if you've watched my channel before, you know I enjoy working on vehicles. I also like taking a look at the various diagnostic tools that are available to work on them. And the tools that we've looked at in the past have been generic tools, meaning that we're able to work across a wide variety of vehicles. But the problem with those is they can get quite expensive when you're looking at a fully featured scan tool. So this is a kind of locked down version. Basically, it's designed to be used only on one brand of vehicle, but it has all of the features of one of the much more expensive scan tools. So if we take a look on Amazon, uh, here is the tool. It's available for £150. Uh, Amazon do have some discount vouchers, and I've also got one in the description down below, so you can get it at a cheaper price. But there are three versions available on Amazon.co.uk. So you can get the one for BMW, which is the one that I've got here. You can get one for Mercedes-Benz and one for the Volkswagen Group. So you can use these of Volkswagen, Audi and Skoda. Um, now these are fully featured scan tools just designed to work on only one brand of vehicle. So it's based on the Launch X431, which as you can see is a much more expensive scan tool. Obviously it doesn't have the Bluetooth module or the big tablet here, but it has basically all of the same features of this much more expensive tool at a fraction of the price. And if we take a look at the features that are available, we've got all of these reset functions, so resetting the oil, service light, um, tire pressure monitoring system, resetting the battery management, etc. So all of the types of things that you would do if you are doing general maintenance on your vehicle. We also have full system scan. And what we learned in one of the previous videos is that these tools are able to communicate with all of the different modules in the vehicle rather than just the engine management computer. We can actually talk to all of the systems in the car. So if you're working on the transmission and you uh, need to relearn the position of the clutches and that kind of thing, you can do all of that with one of these tools. You can look at the live data. Um, you can look at things like the transmission temperature, which is essential when you're filling up the uh, transmission fluid on certain types of vehicle. Um, and again, they've just repeated some of the other service functions. So it's a fully featured scan tool, just locked down to one particular brand of vehicle. So I've got the BMW one here, and it works with um, basically all of the uh, BMWs that have uh, OBD2 port. So pretty much anything from about 2000 onwards, and it works with the latest vehicles as well. So the unit is palm size, as you can see, it feels fairly comfortable to hold. It's got kind of a rubberized grip all the way around the outside to provide a bit of ruggedness to it. Now it is hardwired to the OBD2 connector, so there's no luxury of Bluetooth on this device. We've got about a meter of cable uh, that you do have to plug in. It doesn't have any internal battery or anything like that, so it's powered by the OBD2 port. The unit has a four inch TFT display on it and it's running Android on here. Um, on the back here, uh, we've got a speaker, but not much else. You can see we've got the input here, 12 volts, or it does have a USB port on the bottom here. Um, and that's about it, really. So on the bottom, if we open this up, you can see we've got a USB-C connector. And this is quite useful because it allows you to plug it into a USB power supply or into your PC. And then you can connect through Wi-Fi to the internet and download updates and that kind of thing through here without having to be uh, plugged into the vehicle. And then we've got an SD card slot, which we can use to take screenshots, etc., from the display. So I think that's about all there is to say about the unit itself. Now, uh, we'll plug it into the USB port, and we can actually see how it functions in its entirety without any risk of reprogramming anything on the car, because it actually has a fully featured demo function on the unit itself. So once you connect either by the USB-C port or by the OBD2 connector, it takes about 20 seconds or so for the unit to boot up. And then you're presented with this screen here. And the first time you use it, you should definitely go to upgrade to make sure that the system is fully up to date with the latest firmware updates. And when I connected mine by Wi-Fi, uh, this connects just like any other Android device. You go to settings, network, uh, Wi-Fi, and then just connect to any local access point that you've got the security details for, uh, preferably your own. And then you can just go onto this screen here and make sure that everything's up to date. So first of all, it updated the general uh, UI, and then it was able to update all of the individual functions that are on the system as well. Now, the one thing 
to notice about this unit is that it didn't actually require to sign up to any kind of service. So I was expecting to have to uh, create maybe a launch account and sign in there. Didn't need any of that whatsoever. Once I was connected to Wi-Fi, it just let me update everything. Uh, no subscription as far as I can see required. And as you can see here, it says the expiration date is in about 10 years time. So I'm guessing uh, this basically is designed for 10 years use and then you'd be expected to upgrade to some other new device. So everything is all up to date here. And the really nice thing on this unit is we can go to diagnose. And if you've never used the device before and you don't want to make a mistake on your own vehicle or on the vehicle that you're working on, you can go to demo and we can go here, press OK. And it will launch a demo mode and basically emulate connecting via the OBD2 port to a vehicle. Now, oddly, although this is a tool designed for Volkswagens, uh, BMW, Mercedes, we don't have the BMW or the Mercedes options on here, although we do have Volkswagen, uh, but we don't have these options available uh, on the Creda Elite, but we're able to simulate a Ford. But I think this basically, as I said, is using the same firmware as some of the other um, diagnostic tools. So we can emulate uh, connecting to the tool uh, to the car comes up with an example of what you would get as you um, connect to that vehicle and then you're able to go through and see all the functions available so the first thing that you do if you're presented with a vehicle and you want to see if there's anything wrong with it is go to health report so we'll click on that and as you can see the touch screen and everything is quite responsive uh, I've not noticed any kind of uh, issues with it not detecting uh, touch presses or anything like that so it's going through emulating how it would take to scan through all of the various modules that are on a vehicle and we will plug this into a, a real vehicle and just check that it does do the same thing so here's what the screen might look like if you happen to be extremely unlucky and have these three faults on your powertrain control module and we can actually scroll through and have a look at all of the different modules that it has scanned and we're able to go into any of these modules and look at the version information so things like the firmware uh, which hardware version you've got installed, that kind of thing. We can also just double check that there are no stored pending codes or uh, history codes on here, but obviously it's saying here, no faults here. And we can also read live data. So we can look at all of the different things that that particular module is reading. So we can just select a whole bunch of these, press OK, and it will tell you in real time the status of each of those things. So that can be quite useful. Um, on the transmission, for example, uh, certainly on BMWs, when you're filling up the transmission, you need to be aware of the temperature when you're filling it up. You need to wait for it to get to a certain operating point and then top it up. And it's really useful to be able to read things like the temperature of the system. So um, it's got things like the, the gear commanded. Uh, we should have the temperature in here, maybe not on this particular example of a Ford. Um, but you can go through there and read the live data. Now, if we go back to the PCM where we've got our three faults, we can go across here. Again, we can look at the version information, just check that we've got the right PCM installed, and then we can read the fault codes. And this is where we've got three different codes here. And if we go to code search, it will allow us to go onto Google, for example, and look at what a P. 0401 is uh, and give you some hints as to how you might want to fix that problem. Uh, there's also a button that says help. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just on uh, the demo or well, if we can get it to show up. Am I pressing it in the right point? There we go. Must have not have my finger quite there but um, it also gives some possible failures. Now it says demo help so I'm guessing on the demo, uh, it doesn't actually tell you what those failures might be, but um, if you're on a real vehicle, it could give you some example diagnostics to help you uh, try and narrow down the problem. So if we go back here, uh, again, just like with any of the others, we can have a look at some live data to help us work out what the problem is. And we can also graph that data. So if we just wanna look at the one, we can click on graph here and we can see what's happening in real time with the accelerator position. And just like with the other tools that we took a look at, if we click combine, we can select multiple of those 
press OK, and we can view those all on the graph together. And I think we are limited once again to just four bits of live data on one graph at one time, but I think you'd struggle on this screen to view any more than that. So uh, basically we can do all of the diagnostics that you'd want to be able to do to read what's going on inside any of the modules and that will help you with your fix for the vehicle. Now if you did want to try and clear the codes you can go to clear fault codes and it says are you sure? Press yes and with any luck provided you fix the problem then the code will go away and if we go read fault codes you can see here it's saying that the result is okay and no further faults with the vehicle. So what we looked at there was the health report, which is a really nice way just to quickly see what's going on with a vehicle that you're working on. However, if you've got a specific fault, but you don't know what module it might be associated with, you go to System Scan, and what this does is it goes through and sees what modules are available for the system to communicate, because depending on the options that you had selected when you had your vehicle manufactured, some modules might not be there in the entire list of modules available for that car. So for example, if we had a problem with the uh, alarm, for example, we might want to go to the body control module and then we can go through and it's got exactly the same set of information that we had available on the um, health report. So we can look at the version information, we can see the hardware, software versions, we can check whether there's any fault codes stored and then we can go through and actually read the data streams. And the alarm one is actually quite useful. Um, I found recently with a vehicle where the alarm just kept going off randomly, uh, this tool actually had the last five events that caused the alarm to go off on the data stream, which is really handy so that you can work out the cause and try and find out what's actually going wrong. The last option in here is the system selection. And basically this just has every module, as I was mentioning, that is available for that particular type of vehicle. But the problem is, as I said, you might not have all of these fitted to the car. You might not have a front controls interface module because you didn't have a certain option selected when you had your vehicle manufactured. So this just saves you uh, going through each of these and then finding out that it can't communicate because that module wasn't fitted. So that was the diagnose function here, which allows us to talk to all of the modules in the vehicle. And that is free to use for the entire life of the unit with updates available for around 10 years, it looks like. Now, OBD2 functionality here, which we need to be connected to a vehicle for, is generic OBD2 data. So the type of info you might get from a basic tool that doesn't have all of that extra functionality it allows us to talk to the ECM, read the codes from the ECM, and then also read the live data that is presented to generic tools. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. And then we've got the reset, and these are the 31 service reset functions that were available, which I mentioned um, earlier on in the video. Now, it looks like these are only available for one year from using the unit. After that point, you have to go to the mall to buy updates for it. And it looks like they're quite expensive. I didn't see one that just covered all of that functionality. And there also seems to be a whole load on here that don't seem to be relevant to this particular unit. Um, so here we can say, see like ABS bleeding, it's asking for $38, <coughs> which, excuse me, is, is quite a lot of money actually for all of that stuff. So here we are plugged in to the vehicle and at the top here it's showing the battery voltage. So we've got the engine running so you can see it's charging. We can go through to diagnose and we'll just check that we still have all of the functionality we mentioned before. So BMW, press OK. And we'll just do a, um, a system search. We might actually have a few history codes on here related to the catalytic converters after I've recently changed the O2 sensors. So let's have a look. I have noticed it's a little bit slower at communicating with an actual vehicle than obviously the demo. So this is taking quite a bit longer than before, a couple of minutes actually to get through to this stage. And so yeah, a couple of codes there related to the catalytic converter. Uh, it turned out actually that the post-cat O2 sensors on this vehicle were faulty. They were very sluggish and it was giving false information, making it think that there was a problem with the catalytic converter. So we can go through and we can probably clear those errors.
and we can just double check and yeah no fault code so it's all working properly now now if we go to the main menu for the dme for example you'll notice compared to the demo we've actually got a really interesting and really useful function at the bottom here called actuation test so if we click on here these are really useful for vehicle diagnostics let's say we've got a problem where the vehicle is overheating and we've noticed that the radiator fan isn't actually operating and we don't know whether that's because uh, the thermostat's not working properly whether the fan is seized or whether there's an electrical problem so we can go here to ebox fan for example and if we run this it will run the fan at full speed for 20 seconds and what that means is we can test whether the fan itself will spin whether we're getting power to the fan connector uh, or whether the problem is upstream from that let's say there's a problem with the thermostat that's preventing the fan from ever actuating so these are the much more useful functions in a diagnostic tool the type of thing that you have on the more advanced tools and you can see there's a whole load on here uh, we can tell it to run the electric coolant pump which I also replaced recently I did a video on that um, we can run that at 50% speed and 95% speed just to prove that it is actually working properly so these are really useful functions and um, you know the type of thing that you want one of these advanced diagnostic tools for now if we go to obd2 it's going to try and work out what vehicle is connected and this actually works for all vehicles so we have to go through and work out what protocol the vehicle talks in so it's going to take a while to go through this uh, but you can actually use this tool to read generic ecu codes on any brand of vehicle that supports obd2 diagnostics so here you can see this is the type of user interface we get in generic OBD2. So we can read things like fault codes, live data. Uh, so we can go through here, for example. And we can read the throttle position. Press OK on there. It's at 14%. If I give it a little blip, we can see it goes much higher. So we can read all kinds of things from the data streams. And we can also read the fault codes that are on the ECU and clear them we can look at the o2 sensor type stuff and everything like that so that's the uh, obd2 diagnostics then we've got the reset functions let's see if it picks up any here so i did manage to find all of the reset functions it's not under the reset menu you have to go into diagnose and then special function then you've got everything here so let's say we just change the oil we can go through and reset the oil service light uh, we can reset some of the learned values, calibrate the mechatronic unit, for example, adjust the idle speed, so everything there. Uh, in chassis, we've got things like bleeding the ABS pump. In body, we've got things like uh, learning the values for the electric windows and the electric sunroof and everything like that. So we've got all of these special functions that you might want to do on your vehicle in the diagnose menu, so you don't actually need to buy any of those licenses that were in the mall. And then we can do things like look at the vehicle order which shows all the modules that are connected to the vehicle with the various options that have been set and this allows you to customize the vehicle so for example if you did move to another country it had different headlights you can tell it you've got that different version of headlights fitted that might have a different standard for how the lights are used and that kind of thing so all of the coding uh, that you can do with the bmw tools insta and all those kind of tools that are a bit tricky to use you can do on this little tool here so that is the launch Creda Elite, and I'm not sure if you noticed in the user interface, it's very similar to those two King Berlin tools that we looked at recently, offered all of the same types of features. And I've also just had confirmation from the vendor that the updates are now going to be free for life. It's not that 10 year thing, they're gonna be free for the entire life of the device until it breaks basically. So uh, this seems like quite a sensible option, especially for the DIYer, where you're probably only going to be working on your car maybe once a year prior to the MOT test. And so you'd end up having to pay every year on some of those tools just before you took it for MOT. So now that this is free updates for life, I think it's quite an attractive proposition. So I'll put links in the description down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave any comments or thoughts in the comments section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.